Hello everybody, hello. I've actually been working on the Reliant this morning and I'm actually quite annoyed with myself because I've had such an unproductive day. It's like two o'clock and I have literally done nothing. I've been trying to do things and everything's been failing and nothing's been going right and it's literally getting on my nerves. It's off the jack stands, it's away from sight, out of sight, out of mind. And the E30 is behind us. Now, I'm probably just gonna go into the exact same situation because, well, now the engine's in, which is great, right? It's great, but now the engine is in, many more problems have arose. Um, but we've got a bunch of goodies here, and I mean a bunch of goodies. And today we're gonna start installing them because I want this engine running, oh, sorry, I'm not. I want this engine running ASAP. I want it driving, but I know that's quite a bit of a far distance away. But we've got a bunch of goodies here and hope, well one thing I've ordered hasn't actually turned up and I actually quite need it. But, we've got a few things and I'll show you what we've got. First thing here, I actually went to Barcelona the other week and on the way I thought it was a good opportunity to pick up this thing. I spoke to a few E30 people and a few things and they were saying that the steering racks in these cars aren't actually that good. They're like super vague and their actual lock to lock is really long. So I picked up an E46 purple tag. Apparently that's a thing in the BMW world. Uh, it's a purple tag here. And apparently that is like the M Sport version of their steering rack. And apparently this has got like a two point something lock to lock instead of a three point something lock to lock. I don't know. It's a quick steering rack and it's a lot quicker than the one in there at the minute. And with this rack, you can reuse the tie rods and the track rods. So it's basically just a plug and play rack. Since we're going to be doing like a, a, an electric steering pump setup, I thought this would be a good thing to do. So on that, I've actually got an electric steering pump from a Mark V Astra. So this allows us to take the power steering off the engine uh, and we can run this wherever we want in the car and we can just make some lines for this steering rack. So that's one thing. And the thing I'm super, super excited about, you have a full fuel setup here. So we've got a swell pot with twin Walbro pumps in there. We've got a facet lift pump, which is gonna feed our swell pot. And which has just turned up this morning, we have an aftermarket fuel cell. It's not the biggest because I wanted to spend a little bit less money and I thought this would be fine, but it is actually quite small. But we're gonna start installing this. This is actually gonna be in the boot of the car. Now the, the boot of the car at the minute is full of shit. I've actually not even looked what's in the boot. So let's uh, start emptying the boot out and hopefully we'll find some interesting things. So the boot of the car is one of the only things which actually came with anything. <laughs> There's actually quite a few bits in here. Now these, these are the sidebars off the cage. Which is good that we've got them, but it's also annoying because the guy who had this car before me, he said he wanted to do a NASCAR setup where they have the cage built into the door. So the door opens with the cage and the door shuts with the cage. Cool that he wanted to do that, but unfortunately for me, it means he's cut all of the cage off. Which annoyingly means that I'm going to have to weld it back together, which isn't exactly top regulation. Or I'm going to have to buy the cage adapter things, which are a lot of money. Either way, I'm probably just going to go and weld it back together because I don't think what I'm going to be doing, I don't think the regulations are going to be that hat strict. Got the door trims, actual glass of the car, which is cool, it's good to have, we could probably sell. Because as you know, we're running full legs and windows because we're not scared. Got a load of plastic trims and door rubbers and things like that, again, which we're not going to need. We actually have the original pedal box here, which is actually quite handy to know. Well, it's not because I've already ordered a pedal box for a, a uh, sweet, sweet drift car one. I have an ammo box from World War II, which is very cool. Might put this in the flat, actually. What's in here? Is it a Walther? Is it a fucking Desert Eagle? What's in... Oh my God. <laughs> We have an ammo box of bolts. <laughs> Definitely keeping that. That's a cool box, that is. I'm not gonna lie. Then we have a load of interior. Wow, actually. is that a face? That's a face. If anybody needs any of this, let me know because I'm just literally just gonna bin it. So, if anybody wants it, I'll give you a few days. That means you best watch the videos when I upload on you bastards. And we actually have the full wiring link for the car as well, which is good to have, but again, we don't or shouldn't need it. Right, let's unbox some stuff. So, here is my fuel tank. It's 40 litre and it's A and 8 fittings. And I wanted to get A and 8 fittings because my swirl pot already has A and 8 fittings and my facet lift pump already has A and 8 fittings. So, all I need to do, or oh, is this A and 10? I think I need to get a reducer for my M10 
to an A and eight fittings. Well, have a look, you can get them on eBay. It's fine. So all we have to do really is just run the fuel lines to the front of the um, to the front of the engine. Now it is. We're going to have to get some custom fuel lines because the fuel line is. Oh my God, that's an happy hour. What we're going to have today is we're going to actually start make, bolting this up into the car and running all the fuel lines and actually having our fuel system ready to go and then all we need to do is just basically figure out where and how long the lines are going to be. So we're going to be giving you a very quick fuel lesson. Here is a fuel tank, a fuel cell. Now inside here we have some foam and we also have a level sensor on here as well which is good and we've actually got the wiring so we can literally we've got our own little, uh, we actually will have actually a fuel gauge. Before we go on and talk about what I've got, swirl pots and lift pumps and all this kind of thing and why we need it, we're going to do a little bit of a science experiment. Now this is the first time me doing this as well now. There's a piece of foam in here and I went to Charlie and said why is the foam? He said for two reasons, mainly for safety and he says also as well it, it reduces uh, the swish of the fuel. He says, so if you get a jug and put water in and swish it around, it will swish a lot more than when a sponge or a piece of foam's in there. So of course I ran to the kitchen. And here we have a jug of water and a sponge. So I'm gonna do the exact same movement, okay? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to sell you anything, I'm gonna do the exact same movement. Here is without a sponge, okay? Right, same movement, we're gonna drop the sponge in. I'm gonna do the exact same movement. I'm doing the exact same movement, are you ready? Sponge out. Sponge in. So it does work. <laughs> Bit of a fuel lesson here. Now most cars will just come with a fuel tank and it won't even be a fuel tank like this, it'll probably just be like a feed from the top and it'll draw the fuel out. Now the issue with that is that one of them don't have kind of like anti-swirl things in there. So when you're low on fuel, especially when you're drifting, I noticed in the Mustang, if I was low on fuel, every time I did a right-hander, it would start choking and chugging out and stuff. So it's not ideal, you don't want that. Now to stop that, you can even just get like, you know, really expensive fuel tanks with anti-swirl with anti things in there and like, but this is what most people do. So we have a fuel tank and this is a swirl pot. So this is like a mini fuel tank. Fuel in here won't be able to swirl around as much as the fuel in here. Now the idea of that is you need to feed fuel from this pump to this one. So this thing here is called a facet lift pump. I got this from Over Evans. Now this is just basically like an old style fuel pump and it will constantly just keep drawing fuel from the fuel tank into the swirl pot. So that's just like a, just a, as it's called, a lift pump. Now in here, we have two Walbro 255s and they're constantly gonna be sat in fuel. Now because this is a small fuel tank, if it's swirled around, it doesn't really matter because it's still gonna be in the fuel pumps. So from the fuel pumps, then that gets fed to the engine and you have a constant flow of fuel no matter what kind of corners you're going around. That is the idea of a fuel system like this. With these two pumps, uh, what I can do is I can either just run them together if I needed a lot of fuel, but I definitely don't. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run them on separate lines. So we have a fuel pump and then we have a backup fuel pump as well. Or if one fuel pump is failing or making noise, we can just switch the fuel pumps over and we can still carry on with the day. So we've got quite a few things to consider. We have to consider that first of all, the tank is kind of uh, beveled there again, and that's to make sure that the fuel will go into that bit first, which makes sense. So we have to get some spacers or make a platform, but I think it's gonna get some aluminium spacers as I did for the LS400 engine, something like this. And then we can put the bolt and that's gonna give it a little platform to sit onto. Now we also need to do that for two reasons as well, is because we want a feed going to the facet lift pump as well. So this kind of needs to sit lower than the fuel tank ideally, so that the fuel will always go into the facet lift pump and therefore be able to pump into here. We also have to consider that we have a return here. So the, the return from the engine is gonna come into here. So I'm gonna have to get a custom line made for that. This is the overflow. So this needs to go back into the fuel tank. So that needs to go here. So we need to get an AN10 to an AN8 reducer and then an AN8 90 degree bend to fit this. This is going to be a breather. Now we need something called a rollover valve. And if we do, you know, worst case as well, if anything happens, it won't overspill fuel. That'll stop fuel from, from coming out. So we need a breather and an overflow valve on there, which we can buy. 
And then we're going to need some AN10 to AN8 reducers for the front of here to go into the facet lift pump. And then we're going to need some custom lines made. Simple, right? Might be simple, but it's not fucking cheap. Have you seen the price of AN8 fittings? It's not fun. And that's just the fittings. I can't even... I can't even fathom how much the lines are going to be. So I've made a note of all the connections that I need and I've messaged a few companies that are local because I think it'd just be easier to get in touch with a local company and I can just go and pick them up and then, you know, if anything doesn't fit, I can just change it there instead of ordering all on eBay. But there are companies on eBay that do them. So the fuel cell is going to be sitting like this for the time being. I've kind of got an idea of where it needs to be, but I just need to go and order a load of stuff now. Um, so we're going to leave that for the time being, but I'm super excited because once that's plumbed in, once that fuel's plumbed in, we can actually start the car. So super, super, super excited. But we're going to come to the front. We're going to install our purple target steering wrap for an E46. So let's jack the front end up and uh, let's do it. And let's feel, actually we can't feel the difference because we still haven't got our uh, steering column attached because we still can't attach it because we've got a massive issue with the steering column not fitting with this V8. So I've ordered a steering knuckle and we're gonna have to do some modification with that. That should work. It's not gonna work straight away though. We're definitely, definitely, definitely gonna have to pull the engine back out and we're gonna have to get some heat on the manifold and we're gonna have to cut and bend some stuff. It's the only way because it's, trust me, it's not fit. So right now the steering rack is just dangling on the floor because um, when we wanted to put the engine in, it was just one more thing to get out the way. So literally all I've got to do now, I think the best thing to do is to just take off the trap rod. So we'll just loosen the, uh, the trap rods and the tie rods and just spin the tie rod out. Um, and hopefully we can do that both sides. And then we can change the tie rods with the steering rack out the car, put the tie rods in the new steering rack, put it back in, put the trap rods back on the steering rack. That's the idea. One thing I've learned over my days, don't even try to get a trap rod off. I've been trying to get a trap rod off about one of these. I've just been looking at that trap rod, it doesn't look happy. And I've been looking at the trap rod, I realised that there's no trap rod nut on the end of the trap rod. So it's probably easy to take the wheel off and just whack the trap rod out, so we're going to do that. Four stud wheels. Ugh. The annoying thing is, is like, I'm getting, well not annoying, but I'm going to stay there and break this, oh wow. Definitely going to need a caliper rebuild. Look how tiny everything is, it's so cute. There's literally not even a nut on here. Right. Where's my armor? I've actually got some uh, custom coilovers being made by Gaz Coilovers um, and uh, they used to race E30s and things so they're making some custom coilovers for me which is great. Um, we actually are reusing, well we're using the E30 setup so I will have to run some spaces as well because of the wide arch kit that we're going. So I do, I do want to go to 5 sub but I'll just get the spacer adapter kits, it's just way easier. Hopefully this comes off. Blow torch. Oh, everyone's like, why are you reusing those trap rods that have been on the car for 30 odd years? We will get new ones when the car's driving, but right now it's, it's, I just want to start this damn V8, all right, relax. Okay, so let's have a bit of a play, full lock, okay? So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30. 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, okay? Let's do the new rack. Oh shit, it's gonna go everywhere. Oh, we've got so much fluid in there. It's, uh, uh. Okay, now let's give it a go. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> hey. Nine, literally nine, so it's like a half. It's gonna be like twice as fast, so it's gonna make a big difference. Look at all the shit on the floor. Okay, we might be able to do this on the floor. We might be able, we might not be able to do this on the floor. I mean, wait, what more time? I've literally been working on the floor for like 26 years. I'm, I'm gonna get these off on the floor. Look at me, I'm getting a bit, I'm getting too comfortable with Vices and, and Ronnie's and Charlie's around and things like that. I'm getting too comfortable. <laughs> yes. I was <laughs> on the on this on literally the second to last hit. I was like, I'm putting this in a vice. There's no way I'm doing this. And I was like, Oh wait, no, I've done it. And apparently these go on to the E46 ones, which should save us a bit of money. We need some new boot routes. So, well, to be fair, we need, we need new everything. I'm not who am I trying to fucking take the piss out of? The racks together at the cost of my fucking sanity. 
Whoever said that these rack, you use the E30 rack ones. I don't know about that, mate. I mean, I'm probably going to get the E46 um, rack boots if I can, because that was a nightmare, and there was no way I'd probably be able to get them in on the car. So it's together anyway. So there's one more thing that we've got to do to make it fit. The E30 has like a built-in spacer on the rack. So we're going to have to just make a spacer. Either we just use a load of washers, which is a bit dodgy, but that's fine by me. Or, um, we don't know, we might find something lying around. But let's put it in and see what kind of gap there is between the steering rack and the bolt. So can you see that gap there? There's a gap there between... Ah, there you go. That's, oh, come on, come on, come on, with the you get the idea, there it is. So that's a bit of a gap there. So we're gonna just find a, a couple of washers and things like that just to just to kind of fill that gap. And I've got one right in my hand now, which is gonna be a big nut. Perfect. Okay, the steering rack is fully in. Now, although it's fully in and it's all in and it's in, uh, we're still not out the shit. In fact, we're still pretty much massively in the shit. Um, I can see the steering column here and uh, I can definitely um, I can definitely see some issues. When our new steering knuckle, which should potentially, hopefully fit, comes, we're gonna fully know for sure. So, what I've been doing is just off camera, I've actually been putting all the grounds inside the car, so I've been drilling some holes, and I've been giving the grounds of the wiring loop. I've actually been doing quite a lot off camera. Uh, I've got the alternator all wired up now, because I had to cut the wires back so I couldn't get the plug off. That's all wired in. Uh, I've been doing quite a bit, to be honest. I've been trying to fab up where my, um, Astro Power steering pump is going to go. It's quite difficult though, because I still don't have the radiator and everything like that, so I kind of need everything to be somewhat put in the position where it needs to be before I start fully making brackets and holes and drilling holes for things. So I actually just want to have a little bit of a motivation, uh, a motivation lift, okay? So I put the grounds on the wiring loop. There's a couple more grounds here which I'm just gonna ground up, and then we're gonna put a battery to it. I can't crank it because well, I probably can, but I shouldn't crank it. I, 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 no, I'm not going to crank it because like nothing, no belts are attached. Uh, the flywheel is literally pressed up against the uh, against the firewall right now. So I'm not going to crank it, but I just want to see if we're getting power and the uh, the dash is lighting up. So this is a, it's only a small step, but like little things like this make it more real. So let's put these last two grounds in. Come on, let's see if it lights up. Okay. I feel like this is not going to work. The more, the more I just look, then the more grounds I've missed. But we're giving it a go anyway. Are we ready? I don't even know if the battery's buddy. There's lots of lots of factors here which should they say, yep, yeah, nothing, <laughs> nothing, absolutely nothing. It's a bit weird. Okay, I'm pretty sure I've not got any grounds connected because the main ground lead isn't connected to anything. But just to make sure, I've got a jump pack on. Let's just. Yeah, no, I've not got any ground. I think we've got to put a ground lead on. <laughs> getting late and I need to go home because I need to go to the gym, I need to eat and then I'm going to be back here again in the morning. It's already like half eight now. <laughs> so uh, unfortunately, there's still a few grounds down here. There's one ground that's just annoying because it's like the perfect place for a bolt and the thread's just shit and it's not tightening and it's really annoying. And then I literally have one left and I'm pretty sure it's going to go through the chassis somewhere. It's a big ground cable. One goes to the engine, it just makes sense for the other one to go to the uh, go through the chassis. So I've got to cut that, I've got to cut a hole, but I just need to figure out somewhere where it needs to go. It's a really tight cable and I'm going to be here all night. So I'm going to end this video here and in the next episode we're going to carry on with the E30. And uh, to be fair, it's actually not far off starting. It's just, we're going to fuck around with all them fuel lines, which is going to be a bit annoying. But for now, I love you all and I'll see you in the next one.